Now we're live. <laughs> Alright, we ready to go? Alright guys, so today we shall continue our fundamental overview of the full mount semester. Um, we talked in the first week about the basic principles of the mount, right? Which is that what the mount kind of gives us is this dividing quality, right? In the sense of if, um, and so he picked up a section of the Yeah, like a little bit of And then, Jim, can you lay on your, on your back with your head facing down? What the mount basically affords us is it basically puts a divider smack dab in the middle of this person, right? The benefit that this affords me is that uh, it takes advantage of one very basic principle, which is that if I want to control this person's body, I'm going to need to control the hips and the shoulders. I only need to control one to control the other, meaning that if I just hunker down and own Jimmy's hips, if you try to like get on your side and get away, it's like. I can just kind of keep him pinned just by uh, smashing his hips. Likewise, as we all should be familiar, if I were controlling the shoulders with the standard side control, if you move around, you know, even if you could turn his hips over, it's like, see, Jimmy's getting a pretty good rotation of his hips. Until his shoulders can turn over, he cannot escape. Right? So both have to turn in order for him to get up and get out. By dividing this person in the middle, it allows me the opportunity to control one or the other, which subsequently it controls the other. Right? Does that make sense? Like, kind of a vague way to put it, but that's the idea. Last week, we talked specifically about the high mount, which is where I get super high up on the sternum to where, as long as I stay square, if Jimmy starts trying to buck and bridge and move around, you know, it's very hard for him to get out of here. I have a really solid control. Even though he could theoretically, like, turn his hips over, go ahead and turn your hips over, unless he can facilitate my weight going too much in one direction, like, as long as I stay square, he can't really uh, turn over and get, get out of here. And this led us to arm bars and, and so on and so forth. This week, uh, let's turn this way. Today, we're going to talk about kind of the opposite. If I can stop his hips by controlling his shoulders, then by all accounts, I should be able to stop his shoulders by stopping his hips. Does that make sense? All right? So let's understand something very simple for a minute. Let me keep you out. Jimmy, do me a favor. Just do a very slow technical bridge. Bridge. Right. Okay. So what, what needs to happen for Jimmy to make this bridge effective? Where do his feet need to be? Close. Right? On the floor and close to his butt. Right. Okay. Where do his hips need to go? To the ceiling, right? So do a big bridge. Exactly. All right, do me a favor. Jim, take your feet and take four steps out. Uh, one more step. Do a bridge. Right, harder, right? Yeah. Take your feet, walk them out further. Do a bridge. Harder, right? Okay. The farther away his feet get from this fight, <laughs> the harder it is to do a bridge. Okay. Let me illustrate one other point. Okay, bring your feet close to your butt. Do a bridge, please. Pretty easy, right? It gets me moving. Walk your feet out again. Keep more. more. Do a bridge, please. Right? Not much, right? Yeah, not really traction. Right. You can't really get my weight up. To, up. Right. So, when we think about this sort of Superman mount, uh, I would say the common, I would say mistake per se, but like one of the ways that people do this that's not super duper effective is they they go right to the hips. And it's, it's like sort of intuitive, right? It's like common sense. Well, if I want to stop the hips, I control the hips. But guys, Remember, the shoulders is what's getting giving him power to turn over up there. What's giving him power to turn over down here? Hips. Feet. Right. So I don't need to beat the hips. I need to beat the feet. Beat the feet. Okay. So if I'm in, <laughs> that's right. So where you run into problems when you do like the Superman now is someone will stay here, they're like right on the hip, they're kind of sprawled out, and you see like I'm kind of high up, so as he starts bucking and moving, it's like, he's really wide, right? And I can do stuff to mitigate that, but man, I don't have a ton of control. You see what I'm saying? Because his feet can get close to his butt, no matter how much I grapevine, you know, some people don't like, crisscross here, but that's pretty easy, to, like uh, very lightly, because of my toes, he just kicks to the outside, right, and then when Joe likes that foot back in, that's pretty easy to make, you know, fix. He just kind of kick hard to the outside. So, I want to take these feet out of the equation, not those feet, because they're over there and not a problem for me. I need to beat these ones. 
Yeah. Right. So, what I'm going to do, uh, I can either start with both hands on the mat. Ideally, I would have the back of the head and hand posted, just to start with. I am getting here eventually. You can start from here. Okay. My feet are going to touch his feet. You guys see that? And I'm going to kick. It's actually pretty easy to get that to happen. So you bring your feet back close to your butt. I'll just chop them away. At this point, my legs are kind of extended behind me, right? What I'm going to do is bring my butt to my heels. And then I lace my guard around his cat or his hamstrings, right? Yep, my feet are crisscross applesauce. Do a bridge, please. Is that much, guys? Does that look like it's accomplishing much? No. Not really, right? I'm going to grab the head and post Y. Okay, so I'm low. Okay, you might have to make adjustments on this. If you're like way, you know, if you're up shorter than your opponent, you know, you might not have this necessarily. You might find if you're shorter, you want to go this great line. But again, even by doing that, bridge please, by being lower, that's work. Yeah. Right, versus like up here, do a bridge, he can still, right, generate a lot of power. So again, I'm here, chop, scoot, crisscross. And I'm almost like hog tying his knees together. That's kind of the idea. From here, if he bridges me towards the side, I have a post. That's pretty easy. Bridge me towards the side, you have a post. There's not much. So let's say I climb up a little, make it a little easier for you. My post will stop him. Right, he might try to break that post down, but as long as it's strong and wide. The other thing too is like break that post down, go ahead. Like, if I if I hold it really tight and then go ahead and try to pull it in, uh, it's when it, it's what I tried. You gotta slow it. Right. So if I feel like that post is compromised, just, wind chill, uh, just release it and re reclaim it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Alternatively, let's say, so I'm here, chop, scoop, select. If he goes towards the side, I don't have a post. Opposite foot extends. Just straighten the leg. Please move me over. Go ahead. Right. Very difficult to move you at this point. And then when I feel like he settles back, get back low, connect, and work from here. Okay? If, and we'll just practice this transition now, so then we can focus our next two techniques on offense. If I find myself, okay, let's say you're bringing me towards the head, I've extended my leg, but man, you're still kind of getting me over. Get me over. Okay, come on. So let's go that the other direction. So it's a worthy transition of practice. If you feel like they're really going to get you over, that tactical mount should be right there. So again, I'm here this time. Whoa. And so as he takes you to that way, if I feel like that's not quite getting the trick of the job done, I just go to my technical mount. Can you see that, Jim? No. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. Let's play around with that for a few minutes. All right, one, two, three.